How's it going guys? So right now I wanted to talk about specifically, well, Destiny. So Bungie is starting the development of the Destiny tree right now and they also have mentioned that it's going to be a lot more hardcore and more RPG focused. Now granted this is not official, this is more or less of a rumor that was actually taken from the article right here you can see it in the description. It seems very uh, how can I say it? Very legitable, but it, there is still debate, so take it as a grain of salt. So here is what it reads out and says that was going to be including it and uh, what we can somewhat expect. So development is starting right now. Chris, Par uh, Chris Barrett, game director, Luke Smith, still there is a big role mentions. Guardians using darkness, that's finally, if that's a thing anyway. Open world PV, PVE areas, and I've never said it would be like just a that of a dark zone, and and it's more of a to fight with a territory, uh, for a territory where the PVP is uh, there for a reason and not to get be griefing the heck out of the people, and uh, it's just as well the mention is that Destiny Three is actually more going to be hardcorey than Forsaken, and finally they're going to push the RPG side. Um, of the game into the brink into like a lot more emphasis on that now as well as destiny 2 vanilla was their idea from the beginning and the destiny the reboot didn't change that the game was born to be for casuals if destiny 3 will really have the ideas they want to implement trust me he mentions a lot of guardians who play two hours per week will abandon the game. They're going to, they're going balls out with the RPG stuff as it seems. I'm very skeptical as the fact that they're only starting the development of the Destiny Tree right now, because it's also been mentioned that the expectations of the uh, well, let me read this out in here. So, should the developer follow the same pattern as used for the first game, we can expect an additional DLC coming out next year and then Destiny 3 in the September 2020, which incidentally is also around the time when the next generation consoles are expecting to hit. I will be 100% honest, I don't think that any game, especially a sequel, has enough time of two years. As it follows, as it goes, especially for Activision in this case, I think the minimum amount of time that they require is, is three years minimum. And that's including no, like very little of development hell. Because Destiny 2, as, you mentioned, as I have mentioned, uh, well, a lot of people have mentioned, there was a reboot, then there was big problems with the development, and it actually was only in the development for like 16 months. And that's that's not good. Like, this is what we got from De like the vanilla of Destiny Two is the result of the sixteen months of the making of the game and with a bit of hell in the development. Now they're starting to develop from the Forsaken that they have just released, and now pretty much let's just say the beginning of November. Uh, let's just say that I know it's the end of October, but beginning of the November. And now they're only make, starting to make the game now, and the prediction is going to be coming out in September of 2020. That's like a little less than two years. I don't think it's enough time. I just don't believe so. If they are actually making the game, the Destiny 3, right now, they need to release it in the minimum possible amount of time would be in 2021. That's a certainty. Now, as well as if they have been making this game and all this, well, this is just a rumor since uh, they have launched Destiny 2 and they begun straight away. Well, a little bit of team, I presume, have already begun. Let's just presume anyway. The small amount of team has begun already producing Destiny 3. Then it kind of would make sense for it to be launched at 2020. Now, I still would be, I, th I think personally that I still would be a better, better uh, idea that Destiny 3 will be relaunched and the 2021. Now, this is my opinion. Tell me down in the comments what do you think about this news. Are you, you know, looking forward to it at least? Because like, I, I, I really don't give a crap about this game no more. I used to be so, so much, you know, I put so much time and effort into it. 
it's just like and um, what do we get uh, pay more money so you can get the content no 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 thanks I'd rather play other games and so I completely abandoned it and uh, I do play it sometime and often but whenever there's another game rolls around it's already obvious choice that what game I would choose Destiny or that related game <clears throat> you know for example Assassin's Creed Odyssey obviously I'll go for Assassin's Creed Odyssey and I play that for I call, like a couple of weeks maybe a month of or two I finish it up completely get a platinum trophy 100% completion. That's it. Sure, I'm gonna go to the next game. What's next? What's next? Uh, as long as I just don't have to go back into a Destiny game. Because, like, my personal, f you know, all of us have a, a personal game that we usually come back to, even if it means now nah, maybe there's just no sense of an achievement, but you just like to grind it through, you like to play it. Destiny is actually for me that game. Destiny 1 was especially. Destiny 2 just pushed me away very far. But Forsaken kind of gri gripped me a little bit and I got into it again, but it's just not there. You know, Destiny 2 gave me such a sour, bad taste in my mouth that I just can't spit it out even when we got the Forsaken DLC launch. I know it's expansion. Bullshit. It's not. <laughs> but basically, it's just... I'm very disappointed to see that, you know, Destiny 2 was a, such a colossal fail. And uh, I completely as well very happy that Bungie have managed to turn lots of things around for their game in the Forsaken DLC. Even though the DLCs before that for the Destiny 2 uh, was the Curse of Osiris and uh, uh, Warmind were complete disasters. You gotta admit it, they were not very good. Warmind was alright, it was a little bit higher standards from the Curse of Osiris. Forsaken was much, much, much better. Now, I can't say which is better, Taken King or the Forsaken, because Forsaken pretty much gave the opportunity for Destiny to be reverted back into the Destiny 1 state, when it was all good and dandy. But now, as it seems, it's just not going that way. See, maybe. Now, I just want to get into the fact, when I mean it's not going that way, uh, they have mentioned they want to make it more hardcore, and they want to mention as well that they are going to make it more RPG-based. Now, I like RPG games and I like to uh, hardcore as well, definitely. But this does not result of me, uh, let's say, if the game grips me, if the game grips you guys, wouldn't you like to actually have some good time and put some effort into it, wouldn't you? Like to get those rewards, you have something at, at the end of that, you know, the carrot is dangling right in front of you, you try to reach it, the reward. For me, it was there for a bit of time, really. Even Destiny 2, when the first day of launch, and I was trying to get up there with the levels, tried to do with the Leviathan raid, it was a ton of fun at first. Until we all figured out that it's a complete disaster and it's an extremely shallow game. It's extremely, extremely bare bones. And that's just a shell and there's nothing else in it. But either way, we understood that. We did not want to, you know, praise the game no longer. And when the DLCs came out, they were complete. Eh, they were not good. Got a bit. They were not very good. Even I, I barely played it. <laughs> and um, Forsaken, much, much, much better implementation for this game. But I just don't have very positive view on Destiny. I mean, as a Bungie overhaul, as a company. Because, well, I got a feeling that it's just all Activision, uh, Activision's fault. And... I mean, Ubisoft was there as well when they effed up their own games, especially releasing yearly Assassin's Creed games. But now they turned it around and they took a break for Assassin's Creed games. And I think it was also for the better. Now, granted, Assassin's Creed Origins and Odyssey, they're not like one of those top tier Assassin's Creed games, but they're not that bad either. You gotta admit that. Now, about Destiny 2 was a complete disaster fail. <laughs> Wow, typical, isn't it? But now it says, well, Ubisoft just decided for um, Assassin's Creed not to be a part of the 2019 release. And I like that. Gives the developers the more time and effort that they would like to put into the game that could be launched in 2020. And that's great. Now, granted, there will be some kind of different uh, games coming out from the Ubisoft Grand of Scheme things, like the Watch Dogs 3, for example. But as well, regarding that Destiny, I think it needs a lot more time to be put in 
and thought about what they want to actually have in there. And if they don't, it just sucks, you know, if they don't have enough time. I'm, I'm certain that they are going to have some setbacks. It just, it's not going to go very crystal clear, if that makes any sense, of course. Cyberpunk, they even admitted to CD Projekt Red, they had a few reboots that they had to go with their games of the uh, Cyberpunk 2077. They even admitted it, and I love that. Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 also had some, you know, development hell, and they, admit, uh, they admitted it. Obviously, the game's not out yet, but I think it's coming out the next day or two days after. God, I need to check the calendar real quick. But it's going to be exciting, exciting as hell. Now, I just wanted to make this commentary talking a little bit about it and my personal view about this as well. Now, tell me down in the comments what you think about this, you know, how it's going about. Anyway, I would be very interested to read through. Anyway, have an awesome, awesome day. Like and subscribe and always have a good one.